Well, am I a CRT hoarder or scalper or market manipulator? I've been accused of many things lately with showing haul videos, but what can I say? I'm just a huge fan of CRTs and the CRT format itself, especially now since it's really getting quite ridiculous on trying to find them. Sometimes you just find a listing and you got to buy it immediately. And that was the case with today's package. This is a 804 series Q monitor, which means it does have RGB support and component video support, as well as S video and composite. And it's a portable version, but this one is completely untested and was sold to me that way. So let's get this open with our big boy knife here and we shall see how this came out so yeah this was a sub seventy dollars post listing and that's with my high sales tax of almost ten percent in tennessee and uh, this listing actually did have an availability to make an offer but the price was so low to begin with, I really thought it would have been a waste of time to make an offer because somebody would have scooped the listing up. It was only a couple hours old when I bought it. Let's get a little closer in here and see what we've got in our lovely box. A lot of packing paper and not a lot of foam or anything, so I have no idea. Ho, ho, ho. What a prize. We got a grand prize in here somewhere. We do have some bubble wrap. Looks like it was secured fine. Now me, I overpack. With that, looks like it may have done pretty well. Not really anything besides this packing paper in that box. Here's our PVM in a single layer of the thicker bubble wrap, which is nice. I will admit the box is quite nice. It's a good size and it's double walled, which it needs to be for a CRT. This is much better than the last few packing jobs we've seen. Gosh, I think the worst one had to be the JVC portable five inch monitor. Uh, that one was just terrible. So if you haven't checked out that video, I'll put a link here to that so you can see it. That was packed and sent to me in an Amazon Prime box, reused. And uh, thankfully it wasn't fully destroyed, but it definitely came in some pieces and I had to put it back together. Wow, so <laughs> oh my, look at this. Just look how clean the back of this is. We're starting off pretty good here. I mean, this looks unused, the back of this. Unbelievable, like there's not even dust. Very clean edges. We've got a model here from April 2002. That might be the newest 8042Q I have ever seen. That's a really good sign. Yeah, it's definitely has been used, but just a little bit of dirt, no scuffs on the sides or the bottoms. It's really just needs a cleaning. Let's look at the front. Oof. Oh. Oh, I can already tell what we got here. So this, it might work. But I can see, if you can see, then you win the grand prize. I'll try to get this in angle. See what we got here? You see that? I know you can see it. Look at that. So this was a actually used a lot monitor. It has our color bar here. Oof. We got a done tube. We got some numbers, letters, something right there where my finger is. 
and some other images. So this was just left on probably constantly. Let's power it up, hook up something and see what it does. I've gone ahead and populated our input board here on the back of our 8042Q. We're gonna be testing it today with RGB sync and that's mono audio and then our power supply. We're gonna be using and testing the AC power supply on this monitor. And we'll be using my Sega Genesis, which does have the RGB mod through the uh, triple bypass. And now that we're getting things started, Brutus, of course, is getting excited. He wants to see if this one's going to work, and so do I. It's all right, Brutus, let's see. All right, the very first attempt to power this on. And uh, let's just see. Nothing. Nothing. I have a good AC power supply here. And it's pretty easy to swap this thing out. So let's get this shell off and I'll install this one, take out the old one. And maybe we'll get something to come on the screen. I know, Brutus, I wish. I wish it would have just started right away too, buddy. It's okay. But maybe we can get some power to it anyway, huh? The bad power supply is out. Now we can put our tested power supply in its place. And then we can talk a little bit about the bad and the good here. The good is hopefully, um, even with the fact that we have to replace the tube, hopefully the rest of this machine will work. The boards look really clean and it is a later model from the 2002. Uh, the bad is, is the plastic is extremely brittle on top of the other problems where we had a bad power supply to begin with. And uh, our tube is also bad. So if you combine all that stuff, this monitor is, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a great buy for most people. Most people would not be able to just buy this and take it and use it, obviously, even if you had the ability to say, come in here and replace the capacitors, which are probably bad in that power supply. Even if you got that done, then you're still gonna be stuck with an ugly tube, and, and I'm not even sure if all the colors are gonna show up on it, because that'll be the next thing, is to see if we can even get anything else to work on it. It appears this one was actually heavily used, even though it's a later model. That's why the things burned out on the power supply and the tube. It would have to have been left on for an extremely long time to have that much. Uh, burn in it. It's one of the most burned Trinitrons I've seen, at least in the last couple of years. But yeah, let's, it's probably about good enough. We got one ground cable here. We'll connect that and then plug in our connections on this power supply. There's that. Get a couple of places to connect back in here. And that'll do that. And then we can plug in these two. I'm actually going to release them. It's the neck board, and then this is our tally light which really isn't even a big deal but nonetheless we'll plug it back in and see how everything looks just got to be extra careful with this plastic it's one of the worst things is when that plastic just starts breaking all right this is our ground put that up here so we at least have it 
it'll be okay to be suspended like that. Let's get set up to try a test now. All right, it's official. We're ready to run a test here and see if it'll even power on with the new power supply. Well, I'm kind of nervous. I promise I haven't tried yet. Okay, so that sounds like a CRT would sound. Let's see if we can get a signal on here somehow. Okay, so we do have a signal. And let's try, yep, okay. So something's definitely up with the audio. Now, if for some reason you were crazy and didn't care about all these burn-in marks, maybe you could survive with this monitor. And the, even without it having audio, that's not a big issue because it's only mono audio and you could definitely reroute something and have a better experience. Now, the problem is, though, if you're not someone like me who has just about 15 of these old school tubes, then you'd be stuck with this as is and that's if you invested let's say twenty dollars and a couple hours in time uh, replacing the capacitors in this the old power supply which i have a stack of these that need repair probably three or four so once we get moved to the new shop maybe we just go do a repair-a-thon and try to fix these power supplies because they burn out a lot so even if you did have the ability to fix this and you're still stuck with this tube, but there are some alternatives. Uh, if you could find a 8202 or 8020 or 8220, you know, any of those eight inch PVM, no matter the inputs, they all have a tube that's pretty compatible with each other no matter what it is, even though the line count might be different. This one has a 250 line monitor uh, or, or screen on it. And that's what I'll say is if you have this, um, you can find a replacement and you probably get one of those for another 70 bucks that you know might have a clean tube in it. Uh, and then the power supply. So you're still looking at spending, man, 200 bucks on this thing. Uh, just to get it. Now the other one I bought was a pretty good bargain because all it had was cosmetic damage and it wound up working and had a great tube and everything. But sometimes again you'll get stuck with something like this where it's going to need the power supply and the new tube. And uh, so that's my defense to being called a CRT hoarder. Is sometimes or a lot of times this happens to me. And let's let's be honest if someone else got this they may just cut their losses and sell it as parts or toss it and say they just don't want to be involved with it, they think it looks awful, uh, this is going to give this CRT the best chance because I'm going to come back and replace the tube in it, and I'll do that in an upcoming video and adjust it. I thank you for joining me today, and I will see all of you next time with some more retro content.